restart a famous show like this, you have to keep in mind what was popular about the original, what people loved about it, and not mess with that too much. The classic Speed Racer was obviously made in Japan, uh, but when it was playing on the air in the 60s and 70s, nobody knew about Japanimation. Nobody knew about anime. I didn't know it was from Japan until many years later. We call Speed Racer the grandfather of anime in the United States because it came over in 1967. For all intents and purposes, Speed Racer was really the first anime hit in the U.S. And then the explosion with all the other Japanese animated shows that flooded the market, but he was one of the first. When I was little, I always used to watch Speed Racer. It's always sort of been part of the lexicon of cartoons that kids grow up with. Speed Racer is kind of the quintessential boys action show. He's just such a likable character that you just really want to have as a brother. And then the fact that he drives awesome cars, I mean, that's like so cool. Speed Racer was like 14, 15 years old. So I think we could all kind of relate. We could be like, I could drive a car really fast. I could mow down trees with saws that extend from my car. So that was kind of cool. And the, you know, there was weird action and odd villains. I watched the show quite a bit when I was a kid. Um, I actually am old enough to have seen it when it was originally aired. Um, and, and I always enjoyed it when I came home from school and it was a lot of fun. It was not on the networks. It was a syndicated show. In most places, it seemed to have played around 3.30. I've met so many people from the United States who said, oh, I rushed home right after school. That'd be around 3.30, otherwise why rush? What's your name? Speed. Like Speed Racer? Yeah, right. When they decided to bring the series back, we were all wanting it to be somewhat different, paying homage to the previous thing without being a copy of it. You're the new guy, right? I think if you're restarting a franchise or continuing it, you've got to be faithful to the original. I'm a huge Speed fan. I mean, fan of the Speed Racer, not you, so don't creep out. We were striving to keep it iconic, bring elements of the classic Speed Racer into the new series in a way that continues the story because we definitely are making this for a new audience that doesn't know Speed Racer. However, we want the parents to be peeking over their kids' shoulders and saying, there's the Mach 5. I grew up with that. Take a seat. Look, I know what this is about, and let me just say I'm really not a lame driver. I'm just not used to the Mach 5 yet. Taking on the process of creating Speed Racer The Next Generation was amazingly daunting. We really wanted to tell new stories, but at the same time that we were telling new stories, you have to do shout outs to your roots and to your fans, and we couldn't make a Speed Racer series without a Mach 5. You have to have speed and you have to have Racer X, but our Speed and Racer X, you know, they're the next generation of that. You have to take a lot into consideration. You have to study the earlier shows to see how they approached it. As opposed to actually trying to straight up recreate the show, our show is really a continuation of the original series. We're not trying to create a new speed. It's the same universe, it's just years later. Oh man! Check it out, folks! Speed's new car! Only the sickest vehicle ever built, and I did it! You couldn't depart too much from a, a well-loved icon, the Mach 5. So we what we wanted to do was kind of an updated version of it, but without making it seem like an updated version of it. The original Mach 5 has buttons, very low tech, but it worked. The Mach 6 has so much more. Speed really got the full option package. No! He has more advanced radar and tracking technology that was available in the Mach 5. Speed, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Lucy. They've got a hologram when he's talking to Lucy and Connor. There's a hologram that pops up on the screen. With the Mach 6's new engine, they shouldn't be able to keep up with you on the flats. The technology that fuels the Mach 6 is unlike anybody's ever seen. This design is incomplete, but this engine was designed to run something besides gas. We sort of expanded out on the idea of what if we made the car gasless. I think I'm starting to understand why everyone was after my dad. If he completed this design, people wouldn't need gas anymore. And a lot of people would lose a lot of money. A whole lot. The engine of it is revolutionary. It would change the entire auto industry, and there's certain forces that don't want that to happen. Racing in the virtual track, as opposed to just setting up all of the races in, in the real world, was great because you could set up any sort of race you wanted. 
thought that was a very cool idea that they added in a virtual racetrack. Because as soon as you go through those, those rings that get you into the virtual track, you can make anything. Virtual track activated. Because you could go in there and it could be like an ice tundra and you could be like racing on you know, glaciers or you could be in the desert or in space. So the virtual track is very cool. I'm a terrible racer, but I'm one great mechanic. That's the only reason I'm still here. The main characters are students at the academy. Speed shows up on the first day. He's a new student. He doesn't know his brother is a star student. Hey! You're ex, aren't you? He doesn't know his uncle is the headmaster of the racing academy. Have a seat, son. Thank you, sir. Speed's a hard-driving teenager that wants to be the top racer in the world. His brother, X, is also trying to achieve the same thing, so right away they clash. It's going to take a lot more than one fancy move to beat me, newbie. Lucy's an amazing student. She's the one that knows all the answers, does all of her studying. She's the one that will tell Speed how to do what he needs to do better. Head south 500 feet and then turn 30 degrees north for 200 feet and then make a sharp right. Wait, couldn't I just head up that path? Sure, if you don't mind going eight seconds out of your way. And then you have Connor. Basically, he's the, the goofy, lovable mechanic. Check it out. It's the Mach 5 and I built it. Peep these smooth lines. Whoa! Speed, say hello to Chim Chim. Chim Chim was certainly something that was an integral part of the original series. To me, it was a natural evolution. He can pull things out of this bottomless pit of a chest that works for whatever problem may come up. Hey! Little Speed Jr. now has the parts to build the Mach 6. This won't stand. The main villain of the show is Zyle Zasek, who's the head of this big oil corporation, but he's also obviously the secret villain who runs this sort of shadowy organization who's constantly after speed in the Mach 6. And he runs throughout the whole season, but above that we have other villains. Some of them work for Zyle, some of them have their own agendas, but there's somebody always after speed. Peter Fernandez wrote, directed, and was the voice of Speed Racer and Racer X for the original series. For Speed Racer The Next Generation, Peter Fernandez is the voice of Spridal. Spridal's all grown up now, and he's the headmaster of the school. Excellent race, Speed. You made me very proud. And I know your father would be as well. To have Peter Fernandez involved, you couldn't ask for anything more. It's the guy who made Speed Racer. It's like the ultimate stamp of approval. <laughs> I did meet Peter Fernandez, and he is the nicest guy. He is so cool. And like, you ask him, like, oh my God, you've done so much. Like, you were the voice of Speed Racer. Like, you're a legend to like all these different people and fans. And he's like, yeah, it's it's work. It's my job. Yes, I get a call from uh, a gal that I'd worked with. She says she's got this series that she'll be casting, and would I be interested in doing the part of? Spritle. I said, Spritle? That's the little kid jumping in and out of the trunk. She said, yes, but this series takes place 30 or 40 years later. Now he's a grown man. And I say to myself, that might be interesting. That's it. Tell him I'm coming over. Peter Fernandez's participation in the show certainly validates why we're doing it. He was as enthusiastic to do this as we were. And, interestingly, he wrote the Speed Racer theme song, which everybody likes to sing. Here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheels. He's a demon and he's gonna be chasing after someone. Go Speed Racer. Go Speed Racer. Go Speed Racer, go. I really have a great voice. I should not have become a writer. I should have become a professional singer. I think uh, Speed Racer, because of its longevity uh, and, uh, I mean, its popularity after all these years, should and maybe will go down in the annals of really long-term, slightly revolutionary change in animation. When you have something like Speed Racer, the original series, it's a part of world popular culture. As far as the history of animation goes, I, I would put Speed Racer, the series, up against any of them. People are still talking about it. They're still toys. If they put out a new Mach 5, people are snatching up those toys. And that's staying power. That's cool. And really small. It's gratifying after all these years to know that you've worked on something that's remembered. And I thank the fans for that. Go Speed Racer! Go Speed Racer! Go Speed Racer! Go! Go! Go speed, go! Go speed, go! Ah, quit it.